And I suppose uh, what Tara says and a lot, what a lot of da- what what Tara talks about in terms of data leads us nicely on to our next section in terms of agri digitization and evolving an innovative technology. And a lot of that is based on 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 the data that Tara talks about. And there is no doubt that going forward, collecting more data uh, and using that data to empower farmers, but also empower the message that farmers have is going to be critical. So I'm delighted to to be joined now by Antoine, director of ag tech innovation uh, at U. CD lines. Uh, Anton, you're going to give us a, a presentation here on the practicalities, what you guys are up to in UCD. And then John is going to come in and give us a real life case study with our, our Arunta in terms of what those guys are doing. So over to you, Antoine. Thank you. So I'm going to share my screen now. If you want to share. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Is that okay, the slides? Yep, we're good to go, Anton. Perfect, thank you. So um, hello to everybody. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, to discuss about ACTEC in light of uh, the EU Green Deal. And I'm going to present you also the new ACTEC Center uh, at, uh, at UCD Lions Farm. So why ACTEC is accelerating today is because uh, agriculture is facing many challenges as Tara uh, show us. And, and some of them are listed there. So the food security issues produce more with less, climate change, but also manpower shortage in uh, rural areas, uh, growing civil society concerns on farming, animal welfare, pesticide, and, and pit harvest, and more and more stringent EU regulation, like the Green Deal, but also in 2022, uh, we will have a new legislation on, on our antibiotics. And uh, John Cullen from Orenta is going to discuss uh, that topic with you. So the Green Deal is a big game changer for, uh, for farmers, and, and for, for the EU in general, but for farmers in the future. So because the objective of the Green Deal is to decrease by 55% the EU emission by 2030 and become carbon neutral by 2050. So worldwide, the farming represents 20% of emissions and, and 30% if you take deforestation into consideration. Uh, it's more than electricity generation and more than transport. Today, EU farmers are not really impacted uh, by, by that by, because we emit a lot of emissions, but it will come soon. Uh, so I wrote that beside carbon tax on fuels that you already pay today, carbon quotas or tax or other restriction, restriction could apply tomorrow. Uh, I, I always put the example of plowing. Uh, plowing is um, a heavy soil disturbance, uh, disturbance um, practice and uh, uh, highly costly on fuels. So maybe tomorrow we will be restricted to plow. That, that it's a possibility. It's uh, under discussion at the commission right now. And um, also that what, uh, what is the impact of the Green Deal is also the impact on the new cap, uh, that uh, the new cap will increase. They will have an increased focus on, on the tackling climate change. Uh, and also, as you know, uh, there is a full plan, uh, which is called the EU Climate Target Plan. Uh, there is an approval uh, set in June 2021, and a lot of um, uh, policy will be uh, revised, uh, actually revised for that, especially the ETS and the uh, LULUCF. I know they, they sound like barbarian names, but I can tell you they are very relevant for farming. Um, so I would like to, to discuss the shadow cost of carbon to give a, a more insightful um, discussion about the Green Deal. If you want to decarbonize and achieve your targets on climate, uh, you need to invest, you, your investment need to, to reduce emissions. So you need to, to, to take into account the social uh, uh, part of emitting carbon, which is called the, the shadow post, uh, price of carbon instead of the market price of carbon. So if we take, so I, I give you an idea, the ETS market, the emission trading system is only for EU energy intensive industries like the sugar industry. So it means that uh, every uh, manufacturing facility um, uh, get a carbon allowance, which is tax-free per site per year. And then above that allowance, uh, the company needs to buy carbon credit on the ETS market. And as you can see, the price of the, the carbon tax today is 25 euros. Uh, so the, um, but the shadow price of carbon, the real price of carbon, as you can see on the, on the graph, is today more close to 87 euros. And in 2030, it's going to go to 250 and close to 800 in 2050. 
So you can see there is discrepancy today between the market price and the shadow price of carbon. Just to show you the magnitude of, of what could come to farming uh, today or tomorrow uh, due to the Green Deal. So you have to be aware that farming is not part of the ETS market. But there are discussions today to, to revise the, the ETS and maybe uh, that some part of farming will be integrated into the ETS market. So that's, that could be a big, big game changer. And so the discrepancy between the, the carbon market price and the shadow price of carbon. So the commission will have some leverage tomorrow to either uh, decrease the carbon allowances or to, uh, to virtually um, uh, get a uh, higher carbon tax. You know? So this, this will impact on uh, farming in future. That's, that's for sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Hogan will discuss that on the new cap. But farmers need to be aware of that and needs to prepare for that. Uh, before we jump into some, uh, some example of fact tech companies that can help farmers ta tackling those, those challenges, uh, some opportunities uh, uh, arise already today. Um, the first one is the low carbon farming level that is already creating new income streams for some farmers. And also you can be paid for carbon storage. Uh, unfortunately, not in Ireland as for today because it's a Belgium company named Soul Capital. So you have basically a five years contract with, uh, with them and you are there to uh, certain farming practices like no tillage and cover crops. Uh, they measure and they certify your, uh, your carbon capture into the soil and then you get paid for that. And the, the, cost is, the price is today close to 27 euros. 27 euros per ton of carbon capture. So coming back to uh, GHG in farming. So those are the main sources of GHG uh, emission in farming. So uh, on the lead there, I'm going to concentrate more on livestock and crop fertilization. So I'm going to give you some example of some ag tech companies that are uh, providing already solutions to farmers to tackle uh, the, some, some of the um, uh, green deal uh, targets uh, challenges to, to decrease the carbon emission by farming. So the first one is called ZELP. Uh, it's uh, like a, a, a portable collar for cows, for polygastric. Uh, and this one, uh, you know that uh, when the cow exhale or burps, they burps uh, usually methane. Uh, so this device help to oxidize the, the methane into uh, carbon dioxide and dioxide and, and water. Uh, so that's a good example of, of what Actec can propose to farmers to decrease the, the carbon emission. The other uh, Actec company is uh, Catalyze. So it's uh, an AI uh, monitoring platform using security camera uh, that can give more insight to more insight to the to the to the farmer about uh, any uh, any cow in his herd, whether uh, the cow is sick or becoming lame or going into heat. And then basically it will, um, the herd of the farmers will become more efficient because it will have more information about the cows, individual cows, and, and then it was going to be more efficient. And when you, you go for efficiency, so you emit less carbon uh, per kilogram of meat or, or milk produce, that's the idea. Same idea here with Strongbow and Encore, two companies that, uh, that uh, design uh, a special weighing station. So basically um, they are linked to water systems. So uh, anytime that a, a cow would like to, to get some water, they go on that system and get weighed. And then farmers will receive uh, many, many information about uh, uh, different, different, uh, the different cow of, of its herd. And then breeding is optimized. Though it means that you can have less for the consumption and you know, uh, you can know also at, at one moment if you're, a cow because you know when they decrease in weight you know that something is wrong and you need to, to tackle this issue maybe it's a, the, it's a sick or a sickness or something you need to, to tackle but can you imagine tomorrow uh, you can have a direct connection between this weighing session and an automatic feeder that's going to control uh, the feed intake for the for the for the herd so that that that's the future and it's already uh, coming to some farms uh, in Europe so coming uh, another topic uh, beside livestock is crop fertilization and why, why is under uh, scrutiny today? Because everybody knows about methane, uh, uh, harmless uh, of methane 
uh, through climate, but um, more and more insight are given uh, today on nitrous oxide, which is which are uh, uh, 300 times more worse than CO2, and is basically linked to nitrogen fertilizer. So uh, in order to improve efficiency, you need to follow the four hours of nutrient st stewardship, the right nutrient source at the right rate, at the right time, at the right place. So I gave you uh, some example of uh, Yara. Yara, you have a mounted uh, uh, tractor sensors on the top of the tractor that calculate the Fourier index. And then at the end uh, of the tractor, you can see the, the spreader, the fertilizer spreader, which is automatically uh, controlled by this sensor and will adapt the, the quantity of fertilizer spread on the, on the field automatically. And then on the other diagram, you can see that today for fertilizers, you, you have many, many um, ways of getting some data like with, through drones, through satellite. Uh, and then you get many information uh, that will help you to design the best fertilizer map or, or programs for your, for your field. Then, then today you get more and more info, information and uh, when I started uh, agriculture in 1999 in Denmark, uh, you know, uh, we had only one map, which was basically the yield map. And now we get more and more uh, maps and data available like uh, crop moisture, you can have a soil map, you can have uh, hyperspectral data and weather data. I need to, you compile, you need to compile everything and it's more and more complex. And this is why companies like Provi, which is actually, actually uh, nurture at Nova, uh, they provide advanced processing software uh, to derive quantitative data uh, for the farmers to have uh, a better insight or, uh, or on uh, on his soil and, and crops and to get to, to for, for the farmers basically to to have better decisions on fertilizer programs on seedings and stuff like that so the, the next frontier for Actec is basically what we call the big data, you get more and more information is even more and more complex. You have many sensors, um, uh, many sensors, satellite, as I was saying before, uh, and, that, and then you need to compile all this data and you need to process them and you need, and at the end, you need to get better advice to farmers and then become more efficient. And then we will need, certainly need very soon the AI, uh, help to help us process this data and help the farmers. So that's the next frontier. And, and this is why, because it's becoming more and more complex that UCD and, uh, and Enterprise Island decided to, uh, to go a step further in Ireland and, and create the new uh, Actec Innovation Center. So this center will be located at UCD Lions Farm. It's going to be focused on Actec and the wider bioeconomy, uh, focus on innovation, so dig digital innovation. It will provide on-farm testing capabilities. That's very important on crops and animals, mostly on polygastric, but not only. Uh, we, will be, we will like to be the focal point of the Actec community in Ireland. We will run pre-seed and seed acceleration program for startups, as we will make better connection with investors. And, and finally, which is also very important, uh, farmers are more than welcome as we would like to promote bottom-up innovation instead of, uh, and not only top-down innovation. So we are passionate about farming. I'm passionate about farming. Um, the bit, so basically, it's, uh, it will be a, a, a place to gather farmers, practitioners, entrepreneurs, tech professionals, and researchers on the same spot. And then we will have uh, ideation days, challenge days, boot camp, hackathon, to really uh, sort out the problems that agriculture is facing and find out solutions. Uh, we will provide flexible incubation space, uh, hot desk, co-working space, lab facilities on farm testing, as I was saying, but also trainings, mentorships. Uh, and, and also we, uh, we're going to facilitate uh, uh, the connection between startups and, uh, and venture capital. In 2022, we're going to open a new building at Lions Farm, only dedicated to ag tech. Uh, but before that, we, we, we did start operating, but uh, this new building will uh, create more space and more capability for the Actec uh, uh, community in Ireland. Um, finally, uh, UCD, we thrive for excellence. And to give you an idea, uh, the EU 2020 Entrepreneur of the Year was 
Nicolas Mitchell, and she was nurtured at UCD. It can show you when, when you, and, and as Sarah was saying, when we work together uh, between researcher, between uh, governments, public, public, public bodies, and, and startups, and venture capital, so we can achieve the best results. And this is a very good proof of what can be achieved. So you can contact me if you have any uh, uh, desire to partner or to or for, or you have a good idea and you want to proceed to startups or you have a startup and you want to proceed to uh, investment stage. Um, and then uh, I leave the room now to John who's going to present you the, the, one of the case study for, uh, for, from Nova about Actec. Anton, just before you go, could I just ask you a, a quick question? And one thing that strikes me is about the potential of, of Agtech. But in uh, how concerned are you that legislation could get in the way of allowing farmers to fully utilize ag tech? And I suppose I say this in the context of uh, uh, biotech and, and genomics and, and gene editing all being linked in with uh, GM under under the barrier, ba banner of GM and also some of the other products that are out there that are available internationally but come under uh, are banned under EU legislation. Are you concerned that 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 we need to bring Europe with us on this journey of ag tech to make <laughs> sure that farmers can actually get access and the wider industry access to some of these tools? Yeah, basic, basically, the, 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 the main challenge is for the farmers to adhere to ag tech technology. As you were mentioning, GM is a particular case because it's highly regulated in, in Europe. Uh, but definitely, we need to really uh, like, like train farmers and the farmers also. And this is what I was mentioning in my presentation. We need the farmers to be involved in that revolution uh, and not to be afraid of big data or AI. And we need bottom-up innovation. And this is one of the objectives of this, of this uh, Center at Lyons. Uh, but definitely regulation will play a major role, but as Astara was saying at the end, the consumer will choose mm -hmm. and will direct and will drive agriculture, that we like it or not. And this is the reality and we have to adapt to that and find solutions. Okay. Anton, thank you very much. And John, over to you. Okay, thank you.